Okay, so I have a customer that sent me three Ames power inverters, and they all appear to be the same model, PWRINV 250024W. They look like they're 2,500 watt inverters, 24 volts. Everything looks pretty good on the front. A little bit of damage, but that's just normal use, and everything looks good back here. Well, we just have to pick one, open it up, see what happens. Okay, got the first inverter here and absolutely nothing no current draw nothing whatsoever so first i just want to verify that i am getting voltage in here so i'm just going to go from one of the ground pads to one of the fuses and i have 25 volts going into it so it should run so i'm suspecting we got a problem up here in the system control circuit which is why we've got no voltage to power the unit on for the microprocessor okay so right off the bat checking these fuses this would be the input side this would be the output so good 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 but this one fuse right here I've got nothing on the output side. I do have 25 volts on the input, nothing on the output. So let's check ohms to ground. I've got 0.5 ohms to ground. And if I short my leads together, I've got 0.5 ohms to ground. So I have a dead short on that line. So I suspect possibly the FETs over here might be bad. Let's go ahead and get the circuit board out of the aluminum case and do some checks figure out what might be happening here. All right, I have it opened up, and the first thing I wanna check is the output FETs, these four large FETs right here, because if you remember from the last inverter, those kind of screwed me over. So let's first check for shorts between the source and the drain. I see a junction there, that's good. I see a junction, a junction, and a junction. So I think I should see, I can't remember if it was 10 ohms or 100 ohms here, and it's 10. 10, 10, and 10 ohms. Absolutely perfect. This is the inverter block in question right here. So I want to check these four diodes, make sure they're not shorted, and they check perfectly fine. So here are the FETs, the oscillators. Let's go to ohms, 0.4, and point four. Let's go ahead and get those out of the circuit. Okay, I've got the FETs out. Let's go ahead and just do a quick resistance check. That one checks good. That one is a dead short. So let's go ahead and turn this FET on and off with the voltmeter and check some resistances. So I'm going to go drain and source. I get 504. And I'm going to turn it on. And I get 100. Now I'm going to turn it off. And I get 506. So that FET checks perfectly fine. Next, I need to go ahead and check the gate coupling resistors. Sometimes when a FET fails, it'll burn up this resistor. Also, these are the four FET driver transistors. I need to make sure all four of those check good because they actually drive this set and all of the other three sets of FETs on this side simultaneously. So if one of these is bad and I put new FETs in it, it could short the new ones out or even go down the line and short some other ones out. So let me get the voltmeter and we'll measure these two low value resistors real quick and then we'll check these four transistors right here. 10 ohms, perfectly good. And 10 ohms, perfectly good. Now let's go ahead and flip the board over. We'll check these four transistors right here make sure they test fine as well. Okay, here we go, I'm on the diode range. And so first I'm just gonna go ahead and check collector emitter on all four of these. And I just wanna make sure none of them are shorted. Good, now we'll go ahead and check base to collector and base to emitter. Good junction, good junction. This one's gonna be the opposite. One's an NPN and one is a PNP. Good junction there, good junction there, good junction, good junction, good junction, and good junction. All four of those are perfectly fine. So it looks like we might just be looking at replacing these FETs that go right here, and this thing might be up and running again. I think what I'm gonna do, since these are out of here, this fuse is the fuse that supplies power over to the microprocessor. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and slap another fuse in here and we'll see what happens. All right, I have 25 volts connected. Let's go ahead and hit the power on switch. And it did power up. I do have an LED bulb connected right here. 
off, on. So it is making 120 volts, which is very good. Everything seems to work. Function changes it to amps DC in, and I'm only drawing 600 milliamps out of my power supply right now. Second press is KW output. Obviously very, very low, 0 0.01. Yeah, so good. That tells me all of these FETs are good, and the main four output FETs are good as well. And they are cold to the touch. These guys are very cold to the touch. And that also tells me that the driver circuits over here that drive this side are all working perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and quote my customer and see if he wants to put some money into this and get it up and running once again. I'll probably have to order parts, but we'll see how it goes. I went ahead and ordered a bunch of these FETs, the FTP11N08A, FETs to replace in this inverter. So I always order extras. And the reason I do that is I want to try to get a match set. So I'm going to go ahead and test each FET individually in the transistor tester. And it's going to give me basically the junction voltage. And so I'm going to try to select two that are closely matched to put back in this inverter. So let's go ahead and test those now. Okay, here we go. Place the FET in here. Close the socket. And press the test button. And it says this one has a forward voltage of 0.582 volts, 2.12 nanofarads, and 3.7 volts. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a little pin and write on the back of this 587. So I'm looking at the forward voltage 587 and I want to see the turn on voltage 2.1 volts. And so that one was 597 and 2.1. Now I have another one that's 597. And 592, that's pretty close. And 3.7 volts. So even though these two are very closely matched, I don't want to go ahead and use those two in a match circuit. Standalone, I wouldn't have a problem. I do have a problem with this one that read 2.1. So I think I'm going to exclude that one completely and find a couple that were closely matched. So I did come up with two of them that were exact matches, 592 and 3.3 volts. So let's go ahead and install those into the inverter, put it back together, and we'll put a small load on it and verify its operation. Okay, there's the new FETs in the board. Just need to go ahead and solder them up in place. Okay, there they are, soldered up. Let me trim the leads off. Give them a quick cleanup with some magical solution acetone. Get the flux off the board. All right, all cleaned up and ready to go. Just got to put it together now. So that was a 30 amp. There we go, another 30. Pop that one in there. And since it's been several days since I worked on this unit, I'm going to go ahead and test all of the gate drive transistors. I'm sure they're all perfectly fine, but I'm gonna use a shortcut method because each gate drive resistor drives one gate, but they're all on a common bus. So if I go from this gate to this gate, they're all 10 ohm resistors. I should see 20 ohms. Perfect, perfect, and perfect. Perfect, perfect, and perfect. Let's check the ones on the other side now. This is one of the FETs that I did replace. So I wanna see 20 ohms, 20 ohms, and 20 ohms. And they all test absolutely perfect. So just a little clarification on why I tested them in the manner that I did. So instead of testing each individual resistor, I just went ahead and tested from the gate of one FET to the gate of another FET, and that effectively tests this resistor and that resistor. And then I'm still on the gate of this FET, I move to this one. And then I'm still on the gate of this one, I move to this one, so I'm measuring 10 ohms here and the 10 ohm return. As long as I read 20 ohms from gate to gate, I'm perfectly happy. 
and then on the other side it's exactly the same thing 10 ohms here 10 ohms there so i read 20 ohms there to there 20 ohms here to here 20 ohms here to here just a quick little shortcut instead of trying to test each individual resistor standalone even though i know they're good i just want to do a double verification and so this unit came from a particularly dusty environment i want to go ahead and clean up the insulator pads i've just got a little bit of regular glass cleaner here and i'm just going to rub the pads I just don't want any dirt and dust getting in between the FETs and the heat sink. And we'll do it to both sides. Let me make sure my table is cleaned off adequately there. That we don't add any contaminants to it. There it is. Just like new. Same story in here, just going to give it a quick wipe down. No special chemicals, just regular household glass cleaner. I just want a clean, contaminant-free area where the FETs mount. So next, I'm going to go ahead and apply the insulator sheets. I've got the FETs tilted forward very slightly that I can get the sheets in there. And then when I put the crossbar in there, it will bring them up to the heat sink. Same thing on this side. I've got them all tilted forward ever so slightly so that I can apply that insulator sheet in there. The insulator sheets are in place. I have the braces mounted loosely on both sides as well as the four output FETs are loose. Keep in mind if you're doing one of these inverters, these screws, these four, these four are shorter than these two. These are the long ones because these FETs are thicker than these are. Now I'll just go ahead and torque them down. There isn't really a specific torque spec on these. I just tighten them till they're nice and snug. So the next thing I wanna do is go ahead and check resistance from the positive to the chassis ground and the negative to the chassis ground. Now I'm on the ohm scale and I'm in the auto range and it is so sensitive. If I just lay my finger across it, I read, well, right there, there's 12 million ohms. So here's the negative input to chassis ground, nothing. The positive input to chassis ground, let's reverse the leads. Positive input to chassis ground and negative input to chassis ground. Absolutely perfect. Let's just double verify the outputs to chassis ground. The live and the neutral, I get nothing. We'll reverse the leads and nothing. I'm happy with that. Well, let's go ahead and apply 24 volts DC to the inputs and turn this thing on and make sure it works. I'm going to turn on the bench power supply. I've got it set for about 25 volts right now. And the display is saying 24.9 volts input. We'll go ahead and connect a kilowatt to it and see if we get some AC output and what the frequency is. Okay, I've got the kilowatt connected. It's showing exactly 120 volts. And so let me step it over and get to the frequency. And look at that, we're at 60.7 hertz. That's not too terribly bad. So let's go ahead and plug a light into it. I've just got a uh, LED bulb here. We're still at 60.7 hertz, hasn't changed. We're at 120.6 volts, 120.8, and we're drawing 1.58 amps at 25 volts right now. So let's go ahead and try to find a little bit of a heavier load to put on there. Maybe I can find a incandescent bulb to put on there, maybe a 100 watt incandescent bulb. We'll see what that draws. Well, I couldn't find a 100 watt, but I found a 60 watt incandescent bulb. And it's hovering right at 60 watts. So let's go ahead and look at the frequency. We're at 120.3 volts. And we're at 60.7 hertz. The frequency is actually doing quite well. And of course, I'm only using these little test leads. They're probably only 16 gauge wire. So I'm showing 24.3 volts on the input. So just for the heck of it, I thought I'd see where the low voltage dropout is. And so right now I'm showing 20.9 volts. I'm gonna bring it down very slowly. Right at 20.8 volts. 
I start to get an alarm. So where does this thing actually shut off at? That's a good question. Eighteen point two is where it shut off at. So where does it re-engage at? Let's just go ahead and do these tests real fast. There, it just kicked back on at twenty-four volts, and then of course the drop through the lead brought the display down a little bit farther. Okay, so there you know where the cut on and cut off voltages are on these Ames twenty-five hundred watt inverters. Well, there it is all back together. The Ames PWRINV250024W, 24 volt, 2500 watt inverter. It's ready to go. We'll switch the power on. I still have the 60 watt incandescent lamp in there. It had a couple of bad FETs and a blown input fuse. I lost one of the FETs, however, so I only can return one to the customer. Anyhow, that's it. It's up and running, ready to send back to my customer. I certainly hope you enjoyed the video on the Ames Power Inverter. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. While you're down there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me norcal715videos at gmail.com. Remember with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, once again, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.